Hey folks, thanks for joining us today. This is Ignacio, president of North Star Senior Advisors. Really quick about us. Uh, we're here in Central Florida. We provide senior placement services, geriatric care management services. Our information is down here below. Uh, today, uh, I have the pleasure of joining me, Edith, with the Al Alzheimer's Dementia Resource Center here in Central Florida. Edith, thank you for taking the time. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes, Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center. Um, 36-ish years now and counting of supporting, essentially supporting care partners to persons living with a dementia-related illness. I, I used to say in Central uh, Florida, now I say throughout the state, um, and Zoom has brought us uh, actually throughout the country. We provide support groups and trainings and informational series like this, collaborate with our community partners and are, are, are grateful to have this opportunity to work with you. Excellent. Thank you for joining us again and a great resource, folks. Today's topic, and this is, I'm actually pretty excited about this. Uh, it's, we're going to be going over a brief overview of the types of dementia. Very important. We're going to go into in-depth presentation. A little different from previous presentations is that Edith is going to share her screen and go over um, uh, in-depth PowerPoint presentation, which by the way, will be available uh, if you need that presentation. Edith is so kind to share that with you. So you can email Edith her email's on here, you can email me and we'll make sure you get that presentation if you so choose to, okay? So um, with that said, Edith, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, I know you're gonna share your screen. Okay, let's hope I can uh, manage this. I'm not the world's greatest tech person here, but um, here we go. Okay, hopefully everybody can see that. Let yeah. me start it, there we go. Okay, this is just our title page, this is me. Um, and these are some of my certifications. I am the Chief of Operations here, as you can see, and PAC means Positive Approach to Care Certification. One of the important things Ignacio and I want you to realize is that dementia is not a diagnosis. It is, as it's showing here, it's an umbrella term. It means that something's going on cognitively that is interfering in the way you live your life and your ability to function in your everyday life, all right? That's how broad it is. It's like saying you have a fever. Or as I say to some people, I drove here today. So you can assume a few things and probably get some of them right. Um, and I'll even tell you that I drove an SUV here today. But that's all I'm going to tell you. So now I want you to go out in the very busy parking lot and find my vehicle. Well, you can't because you don't have enough information. It is critical, critical to know what type of dementia we're talking about. And you'll, um, when, when you're talking about your person, we'll explain better, uh, more thoroughly, why that is the case. This umbrella is showing us that there are, um, these are the main forms of dementia, dementia-related illnesses. Alzheimer's disease is the number one form. Uh, we'll talk about the varieties of it because it should say Alzheimer's diseases, as you see there. Vascular dementia and Lewy body dementia, depending on uh, who you speak with, um, some groups will say vascular dementia is number two, most of um, Others will say Lewy body dementia. I tend to come down on the side of Lewy body dementia being the second most frequent, in part because of the emerging science coming out of our Blue Zone, Loma Linda, California, and out of our own Florida brain bank. Um, vascular dementia is, <clears throat> um, anyways, a close second or third. Frontal temporal dementias is another category of, of the dementias, and it is the fourth most frequently occurring, and we tend to see that in younger people. Um, here's some common warning signs. So now you, you know what dementia means, you know the most common forms, and here's some common warning signs. Um, when you look at all of this, the key things that should jump out at you are this, forgetting how to use a common tool. When my brother-in-law called his wife from the gas station and said, Terry, I don't know, I don't know how to use the gas pump. We knew we had something going on. When one of our care partners um, learned that the person, their spouse, was using a GPS to get to and from work in a place they've worked for many years, that's an evidence that's a problem, right? When you put something very familiar, like your cell phone, in an odd place, like the microwave or your book in the refrigerator, when you are confused or disoriented in a place that you're familiar with, maybe your local publics, maybe your church, maybe your home, those sorts of things, um, when your judgment is being 
um, looked at by others, your family members or good close neighbors as being a little dangerous. Maybe you're giving away money. Maybe you're letting sketchy people into your home or onto your property. Those are the kinds of things as we have here, right? Um, one, two, three from the bottom, expressing beliefs not shared by others. I'm not talking about politics. Um, that's my polite way of saying um, delusions, right? Mm. Or you're seeing things that others can't see, or you believe, you know, I always joke and say, I'm the queen of England, okay? Um, <laughs> not the joke if I really thought that. So these are, when we look at personality changes, that's kind of an indication that, okay, we've got a personality change, an odd change going on here. Um, so these are, again, common warning signs of the many forms of dementia, not just Alzheimer's disease. And you'll see, I put short-term memory changes at the bottom because everybody thinks that, right? Oh, that's dementia. And they, 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 their memories, their memories. That's not always part and parcel of one of the forms of dementia. And it's not always the first thing. Repetition uh, may come before that. Again, my brother-in-law, um, years before anybody really knew what was going on, we were all traveling together. And I remember now, Looking back, it was uh, 20 years ago, say, him saying to me, ah, I already said that, didn't I? I already told you that, didn't I? Okay, so these are some of the common warning signs. So you know what dementia is. You know there's um, four predominant forms. Um, you've got some of the warning signs. So what do you mean I need to go and learn anything more? What, what does it matter? Um, how do I find out? When I say here qualified team, I mean it. And I'm going to publicly state this, and I realize there's a level of arrogance here. And some people may look at that and go, well, who does she think she is saying that? Well, many, many years of experience and watching people get poor information and then um, paying some pretty severe consequences because of it. You need someone who understands, is qualified in, and specializes in the world of dementias to give your person or yourself, if you're concerned about yourself, a full neurological evaluation. That's done by a team, not by your PCP, certainly your primary care physician, certainly not done by the ER doc, okay? Need to make an appointment and it's about three to five hours. Uh, it can be very, very exhausting for the person. And this is why. The first thing I say to someone when they say to me, I'm worried about my mom, after I say, well, tell me why, and they tell me, I say, well, let's assume it's not. Let's assume it's not some form of dementia because these are all the other things it could be. All right? These are all the other things it could be. So urinary tract infections are number one. All right? Because they can change our personality. We can see things that nobody else can see. We can start to act very, very oddly. You're, and they can go on untreated for a long time before they cause real problems. To the right of the screen, you'll see I've got important Lewy body dementia. If for no other reason than this, you must have an evaluation and a determination of what type of dementia, a diagnosis of what type of dementia, because if it's Lewy body dementia and we don't know it, and your person ends up with a psychiatric feature that provides them um, or feeds their anxiety and they end up extremely anxious, maybe even bordering into aggression, and you take them to the ER, probably one of the things that's going to happen is they're going to give them a shot of hell no. It's just what you do. And that is probably the single worst thing you can do for someone with Lewy body dementia. All right. We don't use the first generation psychotropics with Lewy body dementia and some other, other drugs. All right. Um, so keep that in mind. You need to know the type of dementia, the form of dementia, because there is feasible planning. There is, you need to understand the progression and educate yourself as the care partner on what, what does this frontal temporal stuff mean? What does that mean? Because you have to have a plan. You have to know what it's going to look like. Um, and a plan for what? A plan for living with the dementia. All right. And this is um, really, really briefly what that testing looks like. OK, you need the complete medical history. The person who's being tested will have to have someone with them um, that an impolitely called a reliable reporter. One of the problems of this whole voyage is that the person that is diagnosed with or is being looked at for 
um, isn't always allowed to use their voice. So make sure that you allow your person to use their voice where that's applicable. Um, a mental status evaluation means are they oriented to person, time, and place, right? Laboratory tests, looking for all kinds of things that we had on the first page, right? Um, they're gonna look at things like homocysteine levels and what's going on in, in the blood, in the body. Um, neurological testing is different than mental status. Neurological means is how is your brain controlling your body? Not what are your, you know, what are your, what's your balance like and those sorts of things. Imaging will most likely be ordered. Most frequently it's MRI. Um, CAT, you know, CAT scans can be useful too. Uh, so these are all going to be dependent on what your person can do. Some folks can't because of things that they've got, you know, metal plates and things. Um, PET scans are hideously expensive, often not covered by insurance, but if you um, would like to pursue a PET scan beyond today's, uh, it's a little bit beyond today's time, um, please do give me a call because I can explain to you the way that most people can get one free of charge with no strings attached. All right. Okay. Um, a psychological evaluation is important because we're looking now for those aspects of um, some of the dementias that have psychological is issues in them. Uh, seeing things that the other person doesn't see, believing things, um, the levels of paranoia, right? Because those are all things that have to be evaluated. And again, um, it takes about three to five hours. Um, push, and sometimes, depending on who you're working with, you can just say this, say, look, can we break this in half? Can we do it in two separate days? Um, and recognizing, too, uh, that we all want to do well in tests. The minute you say test to me, uh, well, I want to ace this test. Also, the minute you tell me that I'm going to be tested, and I mean this sincerely, I immediately feel a low-level anxiety that starts to build. And it interferes in my ability to take the test because we need to be calm and be thinking, right? So it's, it's pretty, pretty rugged stuff. But um, again, goes back to why we need a team. Here in Florida, um, in, in all areas of Florida, every county is covered by something called a memory disorder clinic that is funded by the state. And they are the premier sites for quality, comprehensive testing. All right. Um, and again, if you want to know which one is the closest to us, then just give us a call and we will talk about that. So now we've gone through all the testing and um, the testing says, okay, it's, it's looking quite a bit like Alzheimer's disease. Okay. This is what's going on in the brain in Alzheimer's disease. On the right side is a healthy brain. All right. And this is on the molecular level, a single neuron. We get millions and millions of neurons that make our brains work. On the left side is what's happening. And you see that damaged neuron and it starts to, um, as it dies and the structures around it start to be affected. It's showing you uh, the clinical, di uh, clinical definition of Alzheimer's disease. Do you see that amyloid plaque, that little brown fuzzy ball that forms outside the neuron? And it is thought to trigger the unfolding of the microtubules creating the tau frag fragments or the tangles inside the neuron. There are three general categories of Alzheimer's disease. There's what I call classic Alzheimer's disease, age of onset is 65, can last up to 20 years, um, fairly predictable and progressive, starts in the hippocampus, and we can almost walk you through it, right? There is late onset Alzheimer's disease, thought to uh, start at 84, a little older, uh, 84, 85, obviously of shorter duration because simply because of the age. Um, generally has the same predictable pattern, um, but again, because it's shorter living, it might, some people might classify it and say it moves more quickly. There is young onset, and we at ADRC have started to focus heavily on young onset because there are so few quality services for persons who are diagnosed with young onset. And there's been an 83% increase in the diagnosing of young onset, and that is from the ages of 30 years of age up to about 60, 64. Um, totally different world, right? You are in a different um, lifestyle. You're working. You've probably got children, if not in, in elementary school or, or high school, in college. Um, it's a whole different world, a whole different setup. We have a program devoted solely to helping um, those persons and their families. One thing that um, we need to keep in mind, too, and it makes the diagnosing even trickier, is something called hippocampal sparing Alzheimer's disease. 
as I said, it's here, right? Hippocampal sparing is right about this area deep in the brain. It's where most Alzheimer's diseases are thought to start, except for those that don't start there. Um, they start in different locations, often in the front, and it gets very confusing because is this frontal temporal? What's going on here? Okay, so um, that makes it, it makes it trickier. Again, we need to know what's going on. Um, this is just to show you beyond a shadow of a doubt on the left is a normal male brain, same age male as the one on the right who died of complications of Alzheimer's disease. You can see the difference. Those dying neurons cause atrophy and the brain literally shrinks. Um, the smallest brain that we have seen go through the um, brain bank with us is about 530 grams. This brain on the left is 1300 grams by contrast. The one on the right is probably somewhere around 800 grams. A normal healthy brain is about 13. It was difficult to find a, a picture of Lewy bodies. Um, it's Lewy body disease, dementia with Lewy bodies, Lewy body dementia. What this is showing you, and why is Parkinson's disease there, right? But this is showing you is Parkinson's disease is there in that structure that's hard to see. It's called the substantia nigra, or some people say substantia nigra, depending on what school you went to. If the Lewy bodies stay there in that structure of the brain, it's Parkinson's disease. If they develop elsewhere in the brain, and they can develop anywhere in the brain, then it is dementia with Lewy bodies, all right? Um, and it is one of the ones that is um, younger, right? Well, in your 50s often, and it can come with strong psychiatric features in that there can be a lot of hallucinations, that's things that people see that you and I can't see, or delusions, uh, beliefs that you and I, you know, don't share. Um, it can be very, very, very energy sapping. If you have a diagnosis of um, Lewy body dementia in your family, you want to learn everything you can about it, all right? Um, this is uh, two cartoony kind of pictures of vascular dementia. There's two ways, and let me say this, uh, we're going to talk about this, but just because someone has had a stroke does not mean they're going to develop vascular dementia. And vascular dementia can last anywhere from 3 to 33 years, and sometimes it doesn't progress at all. My mother had multiple strokes, and she never had any form of dementia. One of them on the left is that, and it's showing you there, that a blood clot breaks loose, it starts to travel, and as it travels, it, it does damage. It's called an infarct. It kills tissue. On the right side is a hemorrhagic stroke, right? The left side is an embolus. The right side is a hemorrhagic. It means that a weakness in the blood vessel um, opened, and there's bleeding into the brain, all right? Um, and frontal temporal is the fourth most common type, and there are multiple types of frontal temporal dementia. There's a behavioral variant, there's primary progressive aphasia, and in that, there's different types of aphasia. There's the movement disorders that are all frontal. And again, here's your healthy brain as compared to the frontal temporal dementia. Younger, this is of younger people, comes with personality changes are the most marked um, initial thought. And there's not a lot of memory issue here. You, you don't look for somebody to be forgetful because it's not, a case. it's all up here. Look for lack of inhibition, right? Um, big changes in the way somebody conducts their life, okay? There are some other forms, um, we're going to call them rare, and depending on who you talk to, you can say there's from 100 to 400 different types of dementia. I was kidding, um, poor Ignacio, when we were talking about doing this, I said, well, I'm up to 400 types, is that too many? Um, and, you know, you've got to you've got to keep that in, 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 uh, in context. So, so you'll hear the first one, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD. That is a disease that is typically come, is... Um, I'm going to call it simply the brain converts um, there. It is not, everybody thinks, oh, well, you've got to eat bad beef to develop CJD, and that's not the case. We have about 350 cases of CJD in the country today, and they're usually from that, um, that conversion, not from ingesting. The ingesting is extremely rare. Huntington's disease used to be called Huntington's chorea. It's an inherited disease. Pick's disease is a form of frontal temporal dementia. It's kind of an old name for that, all right? And Parkinson's dementia, again, like with strokes, 
Just because you have Parkinson's does not mean you're going to develop Parkinson's dementia. It is, is this is showing you, fairly, fairly rare. Progressive supranuclear palsy, you'll hear it called PSP, often misdiagnosed initially as Parkinson's disease. Um, I've taken care of a couple of folks in an ALF where I was the administrator with PSP. It's a pretty, um, pretty quickly progressive illness. And then Binswagers and Wernicke Korsakoff, and then mixed dementias. Just because you have Alzheimer's disease doesn't mean you can't form another kind. You know, think of it this way. Sometimes they form simultaneously. Sometimes if the brain is, has succumbed to one type of dementia, it's now it's sick and other things form. Wernicke Korsakoff is most often associated with al um, alcohol drinking uh, too much alcohol, alcoholism, but it can also be from, from other issues too. Uh, you can have uh, dementia if you are HIV positive or have developed AIDS. There's a type of dementia that goes along with that. Um, so anyway, I kind of, I kind of sped through it. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and if you would like a copy of that, just let us know, either one of us, and I'll send you a PDF so you can open it. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> there we are. Whew. Yeah, that's excellent information, Ethan. I appreciate it. And one of the things, folks, that we want to kind of drive home is obviously um, the education of dementias, yes, but the importance of getting the proper diagnosis, right? We talked about that before we set this up. It, it, it's very important because you'll hear dementia, you'll hear from your PCP, maybe um, you know, they'll address it vaguely or generally, um, but it is important if you are concerned with some of the signs and symptoms that we shared here to get some proper um, treatment, diagnosing, um, and, and get everything set up. So that's going to determine the route to go if there's true dementia in terms of how you treat that specific dementia. Uh, not the expert, but you know, uh, as a clinician, I can tell you that's 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 what we really want to hyper focus here. So hopefully, you found this helpful, folks. Um, uh, again, the slides will be available. Uh, you have our information down here as well. So um, if you need anything, please let us know. Uh, and Edith, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thank you, folks. Stay tuned for next time. We'll have uh, another great topic for you here very soon. Thanks again.